I'm going to show you in a few minutes how to use the blend if sliders to control which pixels get affected when you want to make some kind of an adjustment to color or tone or sharpening to an image. Now to use the blend if sliders, you have to be working in with layers because the blend if sliders work on a layer. Each layer has its own set of blend if sliders. The idea of the blend if sliders is to look at the pixels in, our, in the layer where we're making the adjustment and to look at the pixels underneath that layer in all of the visible layers underneath and then make a decision about which pixels get affected based on their brightness. This allows us to concentrate the effect more in the middle tones or more in the shadows or more in the highlights or to protect the shadows and the highlights. Like when we do sharpening effects, what I typically want to do is keep the sharpening away from the most extreme highlights and shadows, and I use the blend if sliders to do that. But you can use the blend if sliders in a variety of settings where you want to control the effect and you want to make certain that certain ranges of pixels do not get affected. Rather than talk about this in the abstract, I've got a photograph here that I'll show you. And we'll take a look at that photograph and we'll look at the blend if settings and we'll see how changing those blend if settings affects which pixels are getting sharpened and which pixels are not. What I'm going to want you to pay particular attention to is what happens when we change the blend if settings to the pixels here in the deep shadows, where pixels are black or almost black, and here in the highlight of this boat, where they're white or nearly white. So we have a bunch of pixels that are close to 255 in their brightness value, and we have a bunch of pixels that are close to zero in their brightness value. And we're going to use the blend if settings to concentrate the sharpening effect in the middle tones and keep it away from those most extreme highlights and shadows. So to demonstrate the blend ifs, I'm going to go over here, I'm going to turn off the background, I'm going to turn off the capture sharpening, and I'm going to turn off the clarity enhancement. And that leaves me simply with my landscape sharpening effect here. And you'll notice that already, even though I haven't shown you the blend if sliders, we can see that there are a bunch of pixels that are not getting any sharpening effect at all. And those were over here in those extreme shadows. We have a simple checkerboard effect, it's white underneath, and that means that there's no sharpening effect at all because we would see any sharpening effect here. And so, quite obviously, these pixels have been excluded from the sharpening effect. The same thing happens here along the white hull of the boat. Now let's take a look at the blend if settings themselves. We can do this in a couple of ways. One way is to simply go up here, open up the flyout menu for the layers palette, and click on blending options. Photoshop named this blending options on the menu, but when you open up the palette, when you open up the dialog, it's layer style. But what we're interested in are these blend if sliders down here. So we're interested in this part of the dialog. The other way that you can open this up, you simply go to your layer that you, where you want to change the blend ifs and click on any spot that's outside of where it's named, where there's a thumbnail, etc., and double click on it. And that will also open up this layer style dialog. Now, as I mentioned, I wanted to protect the extreme shadows and highlights. That's what's going on here. And that's being controlled largely right here with the blend if settings for this layer. If we think about how we want to control which pixels get sharpened and don't get sharpened here based on brightness, we have two reference points. We have the layer where we're doing the sharpening effect. That's the final result. We can say we don't want pixels after they're sharpened to get any brighter than a certain value or any darker than a certain value. That's this layer. But our other point of reference could be if pixels are already at a certain level of brightness, we don't want them to get any brighter or any darker. That's what underlying layer gets at. And it's misnamed, should be underlying layers. It really looks at the composite of all of the visible underlying layers. It looks at their brightness and makes this determination. So let's talk for a moment from the reference point of our sharpened layer and the final result, because that's what's controlled by the settings for this layer. What these settings tell us is that any pixel that is darker than 16 will not be sharpened. It will not get the effect of this layer. It's not eligible for blending. It will also not be eligible for blending if the final result is brighter than 240. This protects, in this case, our deep shadows, and it protects our bright highlights. It says that any pixel that is darker than 16 after being sharpened or brighter than 240 will not be sharpened. Instead, we will use the value for the pixel from the underlying layers. The Photoshop phrase for that is, we allow those values for those pixels to punch through. If a pixel has a brightness that falls between 16 and 240, it will blend, it will be sharpened. 
any pixel with a brightness between 32 and 224 will be sharpened completely. They will get the total effect. They will be completely eligible for blending. Between 16 and 32, and between 224 and 240, they will be partially blended. That allows smoother transitions. What we want to avoid is harsh transitions between pixels that get sharpened and pixels that don't get sharpened. So this allows us to have pixels that are, that are sharpened, pixels that are not sharpened, and pixels that are somewhat sharpened. And that's what happens here between 16 and 32, is the sharpening effect gets gradually applied, and between 224 and 240, there'll be a gradual effect. Now let's talk about it from the other perspective. Let's talk about it from the perspective of the layers underneath. In this case, all of the pixels are candidates for sharpening. Even the most extreme highlights, even the most extreme shadows are candidates for sharpening. We could change that. We could easily make it so that the, so that the most extreme shadows are not even candidates for sharpening, and we simply do something like this. We simply pull this slider up to something like 32. We pull this one over here to something like 16. We can leave this one set if we want to, or we can move these around. We can move this to something like 48. We can move this to something like 32. And you'll notice as I do this, it has a big effect on which pixels are getting sharpened and which pixels are not. Now what we have said is if a pixel is darker than 16, if it's between 0 and 15, it's not even a candidate for sharpening. Don't care how it ends up. If it's already there, don't sharpen it. Just let those values punch through. You could do the same thing over here on the highlights. When you first create blend diffs for a layer, I mean, in this case, we used an action and the blend diffs were already set by the action. But when you first see them for an image, they look like this. They're over at the extreme left and right. Every pixel is a candidate for the effect. In order to get those smooth transitions, you need to split the blend diffs. And in order to do that, you simply hover over one half of it. On a PC, you would hold down the Alt key. On a Mac, you would hold down the Option key. And then you simply click and drag. That will give you those smooth transitions. That's all there is to a quick introduction to the Blendif settings. The Blendif settings are an excellent way to be able to control which pixels get affected when you make adjustments to tone, color, sharpen, apply any effect to a layer. Now, before I close this video, I should mention to you also that the Blendif sliders we've been working with work with the brightness of the image. It's also possible to work with the individual channels. You can control the levels of the red channel or the blue channel or the green channel that get affected by something like a saturation boost. So you have a lot of creative possibilities for determining which pixels get affected using these blend if sliders. I'm Glenn Mitchell. I hope you find this brief introduction to the blend if sliders to be helpful with your digital photography. Cheers.